Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Unity VR Visualization for 3D Designers. Learn how to create custom virtual reality apps for design visualization using the free Unity 3D gaming engine. No matter what CAD being software you use, uh, whether it's Vectorworks, AutoCAD, or SketchUp, or ARCHICAD, it's not as hard as you think to start working in VR. Unity makes it easy for non-developers to create impressive custom VR experiences. Let me introduce you today's webinar presenter, Lauren Smith, who started drafting, drafting in CAD over 12 years ago for a small architecture firm in New York City. And after four years in architecture and no aspiration to become an architect, she found a new home in the events industry. Since then, she's been designing stages for corporate events and uh, and more so check out our tutorial blog scenic mentor for more tips on vr visualization with unity and she also has a youtube youtube channel she'll tell you more um, as soon as i give her the screen and let me tell you about noveg uh, noveg is changing the way designers purchase software offering more choices more freedom best advice and faster services and check us out at noveg.com where you can find Vectorworks, AutoCAD, SketchUp, and a bunch of rendering solutions. So I'm going to stop talking and give full stage to Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Amazing. Thank you for that intro, Barbara, and thank you for having me. I'm really excited to share my passion for VR visualization with everybody here today. Great. So I'm this very excited is to see your very demo. Good. So. so this is what we're going to be looking at together today. I'm going to spend. Um, well, actually, I don't think you need to know much more about me. Barbara did such a good job with my intro, but we might touch on a few things. Then I will be letting you know exactly what you need to do if you want to get started working with Unity. And the bulk of our time together is going to be spent going through my workflow from importing an FBX file into Unity and creating a VR app using a pre-made set of tools called XR Toolkit. And this is something that I've already recorded as a tutorial on my blog. So we're essentially going to be going through the tutorial and I know that I'm going to be cramming a lot into this 30 minute webinar. So I wanted you to have the comfort in knowing that if something didn't make sense or you forget something, you can always consult that tutor the tutorial blog post on your own time and you can go through the same workflow on your own. And after we finish building the app to an Oculus Quest VR headset, I'll talk a little bit about how you can share this new and exciting product with your clients. So yes, my name is Lauren. I design stages and environments for corporate events. I work for this small production. It's a boutique production company called Bellwether in Arizona. And in 2017, I founded a blog called Scenic Mentor because I wanted to help other designers learn how to use new and exciting VR visualization products. This is a, a note to myself that I wanted to show you a video of what we're going to be making today. So this is a screen record of me in on my Oculus Quest looking at the very simple teleportation VR app that we're going to be building today. I didn't spend a lot of time on lighting or any of the bells and whistles that you would typically spend time doing as a render artist. What we're really going to be focusing here today on our limited amount of time is just the concept of how you go from your CAD or BIM software into Unity and what tools you need to do that. Go back to my PowerPoint here. Great. So. What we're going to be doing in Unity is we're going to be building a VR app for the Android model using the Android model of Unity. So basically that means that this app in particular is only going to work on an Oculus headset, which is also using Android. It's definitely possible to build other apps in Unity for other types of VR hardware like HTC, um, Windows Mixed Reality, you name it, it can do it. And we'll talk a little bit more about client sharing about the other types of products that you can make with Unity. 
unfortunately, Oculus right now only has one VR headset that's available for sale, but I'm showing some other types of headsets here in case you already own one or in case you wanted to look at refurbished or used headsets or that will work with this workflow. It's very simple to get started in Unity. Unity has a free for personal use version of their software that you can download. You go through the Unity Hub, which is where you can organize all of your projects and the different um, Unity installs that you have on your computer. If you just go to Google and download Unity or Unity Hub, you'll find it. But there's also a link in the tutorial that I am going to pull up right now because we're ready to dive in. So let's look at this process. And I'm going to switch to the actual tutorial here. So this is on my blog. So if you go to Scenic Mentor and you find the Tutorials tab, which will be at the top, and you can drop down to find Unity. And that's where you're going to find the specific tutorial that we're looking at here in case you wanted to revisit this. So I'm going to put this over to the side so we can consult it as we go along. First thing that we're going to do is export it from whatever CAD program you're working in. So for the sake of this tutorial, I was working with Vectorworks, but the export process is very similar. Unity will import any a, a huge number of popular 3D file formats. Today we're going to be working with FBX, although OBJ can also work and like I said, a, a bunch of different types. So let me get rid of this. And I'm going to open up my Unity Hub, which is where we, that slide that I just showed you, how you can organize and access all your Unity projects. That's actually this step here. So we're going to, here's the link that I mentioned, install Unity Hub. And what we're going to do is create a brand new project. So in our Unity Hub, we say new, and we'll give it a name. I'm just going to call it test. And we're going to create a new universal render pipeline. So what this is, is it's a specific type of project that Unity has already kind of pre-made for us that's going to be perfect and optimized for our use on the virtual reality platform. So I'm going to create that. And hopefully it won't take too long to start this project. But in the meantime, I encourage you all to write in the chat box here, let me know whether or not you have a VR headset. And if so, um, what industry you're in? Well, let me know what industry you're in anyway. I'm curious to see what our combination of people are here today. Are you architects, interior designers, um, events designers like myself? I'm interested to see where we're all coming from so that I can tailor this as much as possible. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the questions box at any time. We're still waiting for Unity to create this project for us, but rest assured, I have done my work that past this part, I've made sure that we will waste as little time as possible waiting for things to load and render throughout the rest of this webinar. So we have a couple so of we feedback. Go. Lauren, we have oh, a great. feedback. Interior architecture, no headset, and uh, no headset for scenic theater. Great. Well, thank you guys. That's good to know. Hopefully you'll be inspired after this webinar to consider getting a headset. And I'm really curious to um, watch and see how more and more industries begin developing and working with VR visualization for design. So here we are. This is what Unity looks like when you load it up. And since it's most likely new to a lot of you, I'm going to spend a little bit of our time just explaining to you what's going on here and what we're looking at. If you're already used to working in programs like 3DS, Blender, Cinema 4D, you might actually recognize this. You have a game, like a, a scene view where you can see what's going on in your scene. We have a hierarchy. This inspector over here is where you get all the information about things that are, so like for me, I am a Vectorworks user. This is very similar to what object info is for me in my CAD program. And down here in the project folder is kind of like the, the project directory, the file directory. So similar to like the file directory that you would have on your computer. This is where you access all files related to your project. And this is where we're going to import our FBX file. But before we do that, 
there's a few things that we need to do, three to be exact, to set up our Unity project so that it's ready for VR. And these three things are in this tutorial for you to, to consult in your own time. I'm going to buzz through them right now so that you can see how easy it is. It's not necessarily to, to teach you how to do it. I just want to give you an idea of how easy it is to make a VR app. It's all built in here for us. So the first of the three things that we're going to do, and like I said, this does take some time to switch over. So I've actually already done these three things and it's in a separate project that I'm going to open up. So I'm going to just show you exactly what those three things were. I'm going to switch it to an Android platform, meaning that this game essentially that we're making in Unity is going to work on Android devices. So that has already been done in our future project that we will open up momentarily. The second thing that we do is we enable this XR plugin management. So by clicking this one button, we set up our Unity project to work with XR technology. Pretty easy. And then the third thing that we do is we go through and install a package for the XR toolkit, which is an experimental, it's like a beta kind of element to this, but it's been around for a while and everybody, it's called a preview package. I'm just going to enable that. Okay. So now that I've enabled preview packages, I can show you this XR interaction toolkit, which is key. So Unity has bundled together a bunch of scripts, pre-made 3D objects, and anything else that we would need that it comes down to the only thing that we have to do to, to make our app work in a VR headset is drag and drop these pre-made tools. So again, I have already installed this. So I did those three things and I put that into a separate project. So let's bring up that project. Here we go. XR Toolkit imported. Those three things are already done in here. So we're ready to import our 3D model. This right here is just a sample scene. This is not anything to do with my webinar. This just comes as the default sample scene when you load a Unity project. So I'm going to make a brand new scene and I'll choose this empty built-in scene. Perfect. Now we're ready to import our 3D model. I have previously exported an FBX file. It was a Vectorworks file, but I exported it as the FBX file type or file extension. And all you have to do is drag that FBX file into your assets folder. A little thing to note though, when you go to export from your CAD program, it helps if you put your entire model centered on the internal origin. That way, when you bring the model into Unity here, it makes orbiting around that center place a lot easier and will save you less of a headache. You can always move it, but it's just so convenient to import it in the proper um, origin location. Great, so we can see that that FBX file is now showing up in my file directory here. Um, now the next easy part, drag and drop right into the hierarchy. So let me orbit around and show you. It's a very simple scene. It's got a stage with a backdrop, but if you can remember from that video that I showed you of what the end product should look like, we should be seeing textures on these objects that didn't come in automatically. So very simple. In order to fix that and relink the textures, you click on that actual FBX file in your project directory. You go over to this inspector here, which has all the information about this object, click into the materials tab, and you go to use external materials legacy. And again, all this information is in the tutorial, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get all of those materials and textures brought in here. Now, sometimes when we're working, I, at least for me in Vectorworks, there can be issues with the UV mapping, the way that the textures are wrapping around your planes or your normals. And Unity can read those normals from different directions than my CAD program. So there are some other steps that you can take also on my blog to make sure, in case some of you have played around with this, that's been the one major complaint that I hear from people. There are solutions, don't you fret. We've got to figure it out for you. It's all in that um, post for you to read. Great, so for all intents and purposes for this tutorial, for this webinar rather, we have our basic scene is imported. But now what? Now we have to tell our VR headset how to interact with the scene. This is where that 
that third step of the setup process, remember that XR toolkit, that pre-made package of things, this is where we drag and drop. So all you have to do to import those pre-made assets is right-click in the hierarchy, XR, and we're going to go with the device base since we're using a VR headset device, and we're going to import an XR rig. So VR is very unique in that when we're creating a VR experience, we're actually needing to use two cameras, one for each eye. And our eyes actually have several inches between them. So it truly is two separate cameras. Each camera is seeing the, the, the scene from a slightly different perspective. And that's what helps contribute to a sense of depth. It's what is called a stereoscopic image. So this pre-made object that we just dropped in here already has done that for us. Let me pop open this parent folder. And you can see that we've got a little setup here with multiple cameras. So the, what, what, the, what's happening here and the way that they've already prepackaged this, and they've super simplified it for you. So basically, we have two cameras for each one for each eye that are moved together as one main camera. And if you tried to do this yourself, you would have to physically put in each of those cameras. It would be kind of a headache, but they make it super easy for you here. And you'll also see that we've got a left-hand controller and a right-hand controller. And I'm using the Oculus Quest, which does have two controllers. So great, wonderful, but now what? What are those controllers doing? How are we telling the Unity app to register our movements in real life into this app. So for example, if I wanted to teleport around the scene, which is one popular style of locomotion in VR, that means that I'm pointing to a place on the ground, and when I let go of that button, that I will be teleported, or I will just simply arrive at the location that I had clicked on the ground. So to do that, we need to go back into our hierarchy, right-click, XR, and choose the device-based locomotion system. This is, if I click on this here, you can see that it already has a teleportation script written and already attached. However, one thing that we want have to do in order to um, connect the controllers to be a little bit more immersive, right now as it is, if I don't do anything, teleportation is gonna work. But I wanted to show you this next step. So to help you understand that if you wanted to customize a little bit in here, it's still not hard. So one of the extra scripts that's on here is called the snap turn provider. On the controller, there's a little thumbstick. And what this script will do is if you assign controllers to it, if you like flick this thumbstick to the right or the left, you'll be able to rotate your camera by about 30, 40 degrees. And that's very comfortable for the user. Instead of having them actually physically turn in space if they're seated at a chair or something, the snap turn provider makes it a more enjoyable experience for them. So it's, this is how basically a lot of things work when you want to customize things in Unity. Unity makes scripting visual. So right here, I'm going to add controllers. There's one that's added, two is added. And it's saying that there's no controller here, none. XR, and it's asking in parentheses for an XR-based controller. Well, I know where that is. That's in my XR rig. All you have to do is drag and drop. There's the left-hand controller and the right-hand controller. Wonderful. One last thing, and again, this is in the tutorial, so it's, you don't have to worry about remembering all these tidbits. Now we have to tell Unity where, on what surface can we teleport. So these controllers have little rays that come out of them. Maybe you noticed that in the preliminary video that I saw. It's like a beam, almost like a lightsaber, but it just keeps going indefinitely. And when that beam, what's happening here on, I guess, like on a script or a programming level, is that when that beam hits something in the scene that is designated as a teleportation area, then they know the, the app will allow us to move there, to teleport there. So we have to first tell the app what area is going to collide with that ray that's coming out of the controller so that it can signal that a teleportation movement is possible. And this is also very easy to do. We simply click on our floor object. This is where we want to teleport, obviously. We come into, so right here in this hierarchy, I have, this is my floor object. It's technically labeled extrude eight. So with the floor object selected, I'm gonna come back over here on the right. And all I have to do is add another component here. So the ones that we've already been working with already had all of the components pre-made in. This is the one area where you have to get a little bit, your hands a little bit dirty. 
come in here and you add the teleportation area script. So now they know this is the teleportation area, or the, the rather the app knows, the game knows, that this is the teleportation area. We have to do one more thing though. We have to add what's called a mesh collider so that that ray that's coming out of the controller knows that this is a collision that is happening with the floor. And guys, that's it. Our app is done. How easy was that? I've been sitting here with you talking as I go through this, but it literally took me what, maybe 10, 15 minutes to get this whole app set up and functioning and it's ready to go. So let me show you how to build it. Super simple process. Oh, but first things first, let me show you something that's a little bit sneaky, at least for me as a Vectorworks user, the, the way that Vectorworks works is like they kind of piggyback onto the Cineware renderer when they go to export an FBX and it goes through the FBX or rather it goes through the Cinema 4D first. So I actually have an artifact here of that FBX export process where there's a Cinema 4D camera that imported with my file. So what I'm going to do is turn that off. I don't want that. What I want to do is use this lovely XR rig camera that we had imported. There is something in here in Unity called the game view. I'm going to bring that down and put it under here so that you can see. This is basically what the camera is seeing. This is the live view. So when I come into VR, this is the first thing that I'm going to see, this door, which isn't very exciting. So I'm going to manually rotate this camera so that it has a nicer first view. There we go, that's looking great. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I build is I have to officially save out the scene. I have made that new untitled scene. So I will save this as testing, one, two, three. We'll put it in my scenes folder. Great, now we're ready to build. We're gonna go to build settings. And we're gonna make sure here that our scene that we were just working in is actually in here. So kind of similar to like if you were going to go to export a PDF of all your sheet layers in your CAD program into one combined PDF, that's kind of what Unity is asking here. It's asking what scenes do you want us com to combine into an app? We only have one scene for the case of, of this app, but you might find that you might want to make uh, an app in the future that has a menu that can take your client to many different options or different areas of, of your proposed design. So we're gonna make sure that my scene is added. There it is, testing one, two, three. And we're gonna make sure that my computer is finding my Oculus Quest. So I actually have my Quest headset is connected to my computer right now with a high-speed USB 3 cable. And I have selected it from the device list here. So I'm gonna hit build and run, and now we wait. Oh, well, now we save, and then we wait. Perfect. So a little spoiler alert, I guess, is what I'm about to do to share this with you is also how you can share an app with your client who wasn't able to physically try out the headset. I'm using what's called the Oculus Developer Hub, which is very easy to download onto your PC. And it allows you to do things like casting. It's got a, a lot of other fancy developer tools in here. But what we're going to use it for today is so that I can show you what I'm seeing on my VR headset and you can see it on your computer. But we have to wait until it's done. So maybe this is a good time for anybody else to chime in or take some time to write some questions that you might have come up uh, when I was going through this. And I'm going to start setting up my VR headset on my end, see if I can get this casting working. So, Lauren, with a question. Sure. Somebody is saying, considering buying a MS HoloLens, will it work with Unity projects like this one? So, for a HoloLens, you're going to need a separate set of scripts to work with that particular device. So if you remember when I first set was going to set up my Unity project, I had to switch it to the Android platform. So everything is kind of reliant on each other. And 
uh, the HoloLens is probably going to need its own special approach. It's very possible. I'm sure there's tons of YouTube, to, YouTube tutorials and other resources for you available. And I personally think that HoloLenses are amazingly cool and you should totally get one. <laughs> Great. Great. Hope this helps. <laughs> We're going. It's still building. So um, yeah, I mean, obviously this process is very short for you to sit here and set up the basic functionality and get all of the VR components ready in your scene. The, the real time consuming part is just making the scene look nice. And as a render artist, we do that no matter what rendering platform we're using. So to me, it just makes a lot of sense to, to spend that time working in a VR app because the level of immersion that you get in VR and the fact that the client can explore your design from every angle to scale is just like next level and um, can save you a lot of time when it comes to iterations and revisions and really foster a healthy and open communication line with your client. And if they feel that their needs have been heard as demonstrated by your amazing VR app, that's just gonna build long-term trust with you and your client. Deploying player, it looks like we're on the last step right now. All right, I'm gonna put this VR headset on and hit cast so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Okay. Well, it's working on my, oh, there we go, perfect. So you should be seeing my scene now. I really can't see the screen because I have this yes, on my yes, face. Yes, we are. It looks great. Perfect. So I have, I'm sitting in a swivel chair right now and I am physically, I know you can't see me, but I am physically rotating in my swivel chair and you can, with keeping my head focused straight ahead and you can see that the headset is picking up on that rotation. Now I have the two rays that are coming out of each of the controllers in my hand. And it is certainly possible to put in a 3D model of the VR controllers, and you can change the appearance of these beams that are coming out. You'll notice that Unity tells us where we can teleport and where we can't. So remember, we put the teleportation area script on the floor object in our scene. Therefore, it registers when that ray hits it as a okay area. We are allowed to teleport here and we know that because the beams turn white. So let's test this out. Let me use the button on my controller to aim at a point on the floor. There we go. Well, I went a little too far there for you, trying to make it still be a little bit interesting for you. Okay, Lauren, see. the image froze on our end, so I don't oh, think uh, we okay. see you swivel or point unfortunately i don't oh, think it's, it's now now we see you okay me. no 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 oh, no it's moving now? something okay. happened yes yeah you can see it uh, we can see we saw you move for a little while and now uh, it froze again so oh that's a shame because it's not frozen on my end let me no. stop sharing and see if i can do it again Okay. Okay. People see fast. moving. So I think they see you moving. Okay. It's, it's oh, yeah? on my end. Never mind. Press on. <laughs> okay. Well, I just disconnected it. So it should be coming up again. Perfect. Perfect. So let's also test out that fancy thing that we added the controllers for the snap turn provider. Now I am going to, you take my word for it that I'm sitting in my swivel chair facing completely ahead and I'm simply going to swipe on my thumbstick to the right. There you go. So this is what I was talking about, how sometimes it's convenient to be able to just use the thumbstick to rotate around. And that was an easy functionality add that only required us to drag and drop. So I'm going to get out of here now and we can talk a little bit more about client sharing. Perfect. And we'll go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Perfect. So obviously you would want your client to come to you. This is um, ideal because if they have any issues or they have questions, you're there obviously to help them out. However, even if that client is with you in person in your office wearing the headset, I still recommend that you do screencasting similar to what I did with you guys here today 
on either your own desktop in, in the conference room or wherever it is that you are, or if you screencast to a monitor in the room. This way, if the client doesn't understand how to navigate or maybe they're pressing the wrong button or something, you'll know exactly what it is they're looking at and it can really help um, improve the communication process when they're exploring that VR app for the first time. But what if your client doesn't live near you? As an events industry designer, a lot of time my clients are all over the country. So what you can do is send a preloaded headset. So what we did today basically is we built an APK dot APK file type app. We built an a literal app and we put that app file onto the headset. The headset is like its own little, you know, mini computer, I guess. So what you can do is load that file onto a headset and throw it in the mail with some detailed instructions and an option to do a live virtual demo with you to make sure that the client knows how to access that app themselves. Then another option is that you can, it's possible to, although I don't know if it's, you know, if I would necessarily recommend it, it could be kind of cheating the Oculus store system, but it is possible to make a whitelisted app and upload it to the Oculus Store, meaning that only people that are considered a part of your development team can view that whitelisted app. But that definitely requires a little bit more advanced skills to be able to add that to the, the Oculus Store application process is a little bit different. And lastly, once you have gotten used to how Unity works, you can build stuff for anything, for browsers, iPads, um, mobile apps, desktop apps. So if you've already built something for VR and you know perhaps your client knows that they get simulation sickness from VR, which is a real thing. There's something that happens when you're in VR where even though your eyes see that you're moving, your ears like you know your eyes perceive that you're moving in the virtual world but your vestibular system in the physical world can feel that your body is actually standing still and that movement isn't matching, that's what creates that feeling of simulation sickness. And some people it affects very strongly. So maybe there's a, a couple clients that love VR, but maybe there's one that really doesn't like it. You can repurpose the app that you've built and change a few things like scripts and, and other little things to export it for something completely different, something that that one client will feel comfortable digesting. Maybe it's a 360 desktop app or it's an app that they can install manually on their computer. So I think that's all that I have for uh, sharing with clients. Feel free to use this time to answer some questions while I tell you about a exciting thing that I'm offering right now on my YouTube channel. I have been doing Scenic Mentor for four or five years now, but I have jo only just recently made a YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, I'm having a subscriber giveaway to try to encourage more people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So all you have to do is subscribe by November 1st and you'll automatically be entered for a chance to win a one-on-one -on -one training session with me. So I will spend some time before the session even starts trying to understand what your goals are and I will help you learn whatever it is you want to learn. If it's with Vectorworks, Cinema 4D, or of course, VR experiences with Unity. So Barbara, did we get any questions coming uh, in? Not so far, uh, but wow, okay. what a great offer, uh, Lauren. I hope oh, everybody, thanks. yeah, hope you take advantage of it. So, you know, don't, do not hesitate. Now, no further question. Um, I want to thank you for walking us through all the steps and making it look so easy, and also for the great tips. Um, this oh, thank you, really Barbara. Helpful. Yes, and uh, since we have no further question, that means that you were absolutely clear. And uh, you know, you I hope there's so. confusion. <laughs> there's a lot of questions, so um, that's my. You know, that confirms my perception. Um, I, yeah, thank you so much. I will take the screen um, back just to remind everybody where they can find, um, you know, just thanking everybody for attending and where to find uh, Vectorworks or AutoCAD or SketchUp or Revit or 
all the major uh, CAD software tool they can think of, uh, come to Novage.com. And, uh, you know, this is the way, uh, the best way to shop for CAD uh, online since we have all the, you know, software uh, solution, the rendering solution. We do not have um, uh, the VR, uh, you know, visualization tools, but um, for everything else, there's no veg. And I want to thank Lauren again. Go uh, to our blog, Cynic Mentor, and go to you, her YouTube channel and um, good luck for the giveaway. Um, thank you so much. Anything else you would like to add, Lauren? No, just thank you all for listening. And I really hope that you'll be inspired to give Unity and VR visualization a try. If you get stuck on anything, please feel free to reach out to me via email. I'm super happy to help in any way I can. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Barbara.